Hi everyone, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and this is another part of 30 Actions in 30 Days. So I haven't recorded for a couple of days, although I have been working on actions, I just don't have time to make the YouTube videos to go with them. But I am making this one today by request. So this is a VRTK Playmaker action, that is the VR Toolkit. If you're working for VR stuff, this might be able to help you out. We've got a whole section of Playmaker actions for the VRTK asset, which is free, along with our actions, which of course Playmaker is not, but it's a steal at its current price. And I think you can actually even get it for free if you're on the um, paid version of Unity. So. What the action we're going to be looking at today uh, gets the velocity of the VR controller. So this is the velocity, and we could use this in all kinds of different ways. Now, how we're going to use the velocity in this tutorial is a, in a shaking motion, and yes, I realize this is <laughs> a specific motion, but um, we're going to do the up and down motion. You could do left and right. You could do uh, back and forth, whatever. But I'm going to lock it down to the Y axis just because it's easier to lock a specific axis that way. Now, this uh, specific thing we're doing is going to require two FSMs to make it happen because they need to run independently of each other. And I'm just using a scene that I already have set up here. This is just my game in general. So I'm not going to set up a test scene or anything um, because actually we don't even need any objects on the screen to make this happen because what we're trying to do is just count shakes of the controllers. Now I, I have the FSM just attached to this random mover cube. You could attach this to anything you want. And I already have my FSM set up so I'm just going to talk about what they do. So. You're going to have two FSMs. One I've called shaker counter. It's going to count the number of shakes. And then I have the shaker timer. And we'll talk about that after. So let's look at the shaker counter first and see what it does. Now, right off from the start state, we've got an action called, I'm just going to call my state shake more, shake less. They really don't mean anything. They're just to help me um, plan things out. So what this state's going to do, though, I'll add a description, is it's going to, get the controller velocity and check if it is over 3. Okay, so that's what this state mainly is doing. So this is the action that I created called get controller velocity and if you download it using the link from this description or you have the newest version of the VRTK Playmaker action set which is from the GitHub account, you'll find it in your action list once you install it and you just type get controller velocity and add it to your first state here. Now you need to specify a game object and the game object for me here is the right controller and this should be your VRTK right controller or left controller. So this is not your, uh, if you're using Steam VR, it's not your Steam VR right or left controller. Okay, so this is your aliased controller. And you just drag and drop that on there. Then what I've done is it's going to capture a vector 3. And I've stored this in a local variable. And I just call this variable um, controller 3 vector. So on the debug, you can see it's 0, 0, 0, 0 because the controller is not currently moving. But if you were to shake the controller around, it's from 0, then it gets up to 1 or 2 or 3 if you're shaking it quite hard. I think I've seen it up as 4 maybe? I'm not even sure. You have to shake the controller pretty hard or swing it around pretty hard to get up to a 4. So the next thing we want to do from that is I only want one of these vectors. I don't want vector 1, 2, and 3, or x, y, and z. I just want up and down. So for me, this is the y uh, direction, the y float. And you can see on your screen, if you just check on your scene view, you'll see that y is up and down. So I use the action called get vector 3 x, y, z. So we're getting the x, y, z from the vector 3. And on the store y, I've created another variable for this to store it. Now the trick is here, I have this as it's a global variable. So make this one a global, okay? 
Remember, global variable for get vector three. Okay. The next thing you want to do is float compare. So we want to see when this variable, which is the up and down motion, gets above a certain threshold. Now, the threshold that I want this to be over, let's see, make sure we're on the first date, is I want it to be over a tolerance of three, or not tolerance, so the over three. So the first float is my global variable that I just set called controller wide movement, and then I compare it to the number three, and the tolerance is zero for me. So I want to know if it's equal or greater than three. Okay, so this is a pretty hard shake to make it go to three. So you can adjust how hard you want your shake to be here, depending on this number. Two would be a fairly light shake. Three is a fairly hard shake. And uh, you can play with it and see what works for you. The other thing is make sure you have every frame checked off here. If you don't have every frame checked off, it's only going to check this one time when you first start up the game, and that's too late to move your controller. Okay. So if it's equal to or greater than, I set a finished state, you see here, or a finished event, sorry, and it's going to go to my next state. Now, on my next state, I've actually just copied and pasted the first state. Okay, so now they're the same. But on the second state, we want to see get the controller vector, just like before, and check it is below zero. So we want to make sure the controller has stopped moving. Okay, so we need a shake is a certain motion and a stop, and then a move in another direction. So it's speeding, stopping, speeding, stopping, speeding, stopping. So we need to make sure that it stopped between each one in order for it to count as a shake. Otherwise, we could just swing it around and it would count, okay? So it's exactly the same thing as before. So we have get the controller vector, change that vector into a float, stored in the exact same variable, okay? You don't have to set up a new variable, just use the same one, and then float compare. Now this time, my float compare, I want it to be zero, I'm comparing it to zero, and I want it to be equal to zero or less than zero, and when that happens, it will be finished. Okay, then it's gonna go into the third state. Now this state, I've got to count loops. It's gonna count the number of times that we've completed this entire loop. So you can download my custom action here from my GitHub account called Simple Loop Counter. This is something I made. You can also go to the Playmaker ecosystem, and on the ecosystem, there is one called Iterate, which does essentially the same thing as this. It looks a little different, but it does the same type of idea. And what it's going to do is count a loop. It counts the amount of times that we've passed through it. And, okay, and so right now my max loop count is sent to 10, but let's say set it to 3. And so what we want it to do is count up to 3 and then do something special. If it's not reached 3, then we want it to keep looping. Okay, because we want to count out three shakes. So you could set out as many shakes as you want, but I'm just going to say, say three. So the current loop count is zero when you start it. And what I've done is set up also a global variable for this. Again, remember in your loop count, set up a global variable. This is important. It can't be local, it's got to be global. Okay, and it's going to be zero because it's starting off as zero. So add per loop count once, we just want to add one for every loop, every time we go through. So when it's reached, uh, when the loop reached event should be finished. So it'll send it over here. I made a new one just called completed. So on the completed state, you put whatever action you want to happen. Like what do you want to happen when your shake is complete? Whatever that is, you just put over here in your completed state, right? In the count state here, if a loop continue or loop exceed, it doesn't need to be anything, could be none. So loop continue, I've just made another event, new event called shake, and that will continue on this loop. So it will just loop around until it gets to three times, then it will go to complete it. So I'm not going to test this right now. I've, I've tested it a few times and I know it, it does work. So I'm, I'm not going to jump in, but it will work actually quite well. Um, 
Okay, so the problem with this is though, is when you, um, maybe someone shakes the controller once and then like an hour later they shake it again and an hour later they shake it again and then that counts as three and then your, your action is triggered. Whatever's on complete gets triggered. So we don't want that to happen. We need it to, the shake to happen within a certain amount of time. Now, one of the downsides of Playmaker is that you can only have um, one set of uh, states happening at a time within an FSM. So if we need a countdown timer, we can't put a dent within this FSM. So we have to make a separate FSM. So I've gone ahead and done that and I've called this one shake timer. So this was shake counter and now we're working on shake timer. So this is why we use some global variables. So again, uh, it's a fairly simple one it, it, as long as we think through it. So it's going to start with the listener and what it's going to do is float compare. So it's looking at our controller movement Y float. So this is the controller Y float and it's looking just like on the other FSM if it's above three. Basically we only want this state, this uh, set of FSM's states to trigger if the controller is moving quite fast. Okay, so we don't want it to start just any random time. We want the controller to be and then it will start counting. So it says if the controller's Y movement is equal to three or greater than three, then start the count. So it goes to the next state. Okay, in the next state, it just has a countdown timer. It just wait. Countdown timer, right? I use the wait action and I set my weight to two seconds. You might even want to set your shorter like one second, right? Then when that's finished, I just added another state, could be anything, could be called finished, I just called mine finished weight. It's gonna to go to a third state. Now in the third state is where our magic happens, so to speak, and what we want to do is reset our loop counter. So if this actions don't happen within this wait time of one second then the loop counter is going to reset the loop on the other state. So this is why we use global variables. So we should set the float value of... Mm -mm -mm. I think I even didn't... Um... So I've got a, it's a set float value. We don't want to set the float value. We want to set a, I believe it's an int. So let's just say set int value. Okay. And set the int value global, the shaker count, that's it. We want to set it back to zero. Then I added a next frame event. This will just force this to go to the next uh, event, the next uh, state. Okay, when it happens, so once this is done, it will go to the next one, and then we're back to the beginning, waiting for another hard shake to start the count over again. So I, I think this is the best way to do it. Um, if anyone has any suggestions of another way to do it, or maybe some other better way, that I'm open to suggestions, just drop me a comment. But this should basically allow you to have a certain amount of shakes that are certain strength and within a certain amount of time. And so you can customize it yourself to make that happen. So that's it. This is Eric for Dumb Game Dev and uh, happy VR.